So, second day of eBay's, you survived. Yes. Are you happy with first day? Absolutely. I think, how can I be not happy if uh, Eurojet is celebrating 15 year anniversary? Uh, I'm very proud that uh, we are here this year. Uh, the size of eBay has doubled since last year. Uh, there's a lot of new, interesting people out there. And uh, we had a very good turnout. Uh, and it's been great. Uh, what do you expect from this year? Or just people are coming, saying hi, uh, happy anniversary. How many clients are coming and telling congratulations? <laughs> yeah, there uh, has been many, plenty. Uh, what I keep telling everyone that uh, they say happy birthday. I say, you know, this is really, we're in our teenage years. We're 15. And... <laughs> And I'm looking forward to the maturity, uh, so not a 10, 5, year, uh, five 10 years. Um, but I think we learned uh, a little bit what and how. I think we uh, proved ourselves to the industry that we belong here, that we are uh, a, a serious player on the market as it comes to uh, ground handling and trip support, especially in our core territory. And it's great that we can say that we also outgrown ourselves and we went into other territories outside of the core. And, it, and it's, been a, it's been a good, good uh, 15 years. Uh, easy question and at the same time maybe a little bit complicated. What are your biggest challenges? What is, what is still complicated for you and because you don't want to achieve, but what challenges are you facing? Yes, I, I think the biggest biggest challenge is uh, that I would like to serve everyone, and uh, it's obviously not not possible because the, the market is segmented down uh, from you know, large aircraft management companies down to uh, small uh, operators with one aircraft. However, I think what the what the biggest hurdles as as it comes to uh, now. Uh, Operating under sanctions, uh, trying to survive uh, the, the COVID uh, was very challenging. Uh, what was very good that we learned through the COVID that uh, information, sharing information was the key. And uh, I think what helped us a lot through COVID that the traffic was boosting and we had the local information and the operators relied on that information. And because of that, we kept the things moving. However, when we thought everything is okay, then suddenly the this, this situation <laughs> happened with, with the with, with the with the war, and uh, it became very challenging to understand uh, in depth who our customers are, investigating in depth uh, the shareholders behind the companies. So and, you're uh, doing a little bit of private detective we're now. We're doing a lot of private sure. detective. Uh, we have a whole team set up for reviewing the sanction list, uh, checking it. Uh, and uh, even we comply with everything at hundred percent. The banks are, at, I believe, are even more conservative than the sanctions, and they are also very heavily restricting uh, bank wires to our suppliers, which is a big problem. However, so far so good. I would say. Uh, very obvious question. We are talking about sustainable aviation. What you do? And do you think that we need to explain more to large public and to our customers what exactly we're doing not to be called climate criminals? Definitely, definitely. I've been talking about this here at the at the, at the booth uh, yesterday. Uh, we <clears throat> we as a ground servicing company, we don't have any aircraft, so our carbon path is really minimal. Uh, however, where we step into the game is that we are trying to uh, change all our vehicles, electric on the ground. Uh, the airport infrastructure always is, is, is supportive of the idea. So you get free parking if you have an electric car inside with the SRA zone, which is great. So, um, however, I think that uh, everything has its time and uh, the, the, there is a a smart way of operating aircraft that you would cut down the empty legs. That's something that's really beneficial for, for the industry. Uh, 
and I think being more responsible towards towards uh, our planet. It starts uh, from our home and, and not with the private jet. So if someone is not uh, you know doing the recycling properly, why don't we look at that first before we go and talk large? Uh, I wouldn't say that this problem with the with the global climate is something that's uh, not serious. I do take it seriously. However, I totally am not agreement with the way uh, it's being brought up as a problem. And uh, I think that if uh, the people who are uh, against, against him or addressing this we will sit down at the table and explain things uh, properly, I think it would be much more useful for the civilization than, than this blockage. As a matter of fact, our company is dealing with emergency readiness program for the airlines. Yesterday's uh, case just proved that they created even more carbon uh, path because the airplane was cruising for two hours over Geneva before they could land. But unfortunately, uh, the dialogue is not happening. It's a monolith on their side. Yes. So. Uh, Let's say positive. Uh, what you would wish for your company for the next five years to come? That's a good question. Uh, I would really like the company to become more mature, uh, but not meaning from the behavioral perspective, but I would really like the company to become a leader in the information uh, flow. So my my key is to have connectivity with our customers through APIs that we would cut off the emails and they would get the information much quicker. What I would really like is to have a solid base of customers who trust us in our decisions on what providers to uh, use. And of course, I think just uh, a little bit of luck would be great for the next five years. Perfect. Thank you very much. I wish you uh, two great days left on eBay. Thank you. We'll see you next year. See you next year. Thank you. Thank you.